Hello guys and welcome to Iridium Rocket Metal Reviews and he was on recently but I got him back again. Kent Scriber, how you doing mate? Hey buddy, always a pleasure. So great, Kent from uh, Scriber Drive and this episode, well Kent's actually going to introduce this episode but let me tell you why we're doing it. I put um, an episode up the other day, the best songs or our favourite songs if you like from me and Kent of Striper from each album, one pick from each album um, and then Another subscriber, when I uploaded it, said, why don't you do, like, the worst songs or your least favourites? So I thought, you know what? It is a great idea. I know it could be a bit controversial sometimes, but it's a great idea. And for future episodes, I want to do the best and worst in one episode. But for this one, because I didn't do that, we're just going to... Well, we're going to... Let me let Kent <laughs> explain exactly what we're going to do with this episode. Go ahead, Kent. The floor's yours, mate. <laughs> I like the way Lee's putting putting the pressure on me, you know, to, <laughs> <laughs> to go there. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, uh, you know, friends, we, Lee and I were talking about this and um, I don't know what the official title of Lee's, of, of Lee, Lee's program will be as far as the title of this episode, but here, here's where we're coming from. Uh, you know, you have, you have favorites from an album, and then you have certain songs that it's just a matter of personally connecting with the song. And some songs extremely resonate with you, and maybe others not so much for whatever reason. And Lee and I, uh, naturally, uh, Lee has done many a Striper episode on his uh, Iridium channel here. Um, I'm coming from Striper Drive, where I'm at, we, we love Striper. Um, we're not saying that these are bad songs per se. Um, they're just maybe songs that, for instance, they are least favorite. You could have a, a, a Striper album that is chock full of tens, songs that you would rank as a 10. Well, if there is a song that you would rank as a nine or an eight, that's still an outstanding score. It's a very good song. It just doesn't quite measure up to maybe some of the others. And that's the place where we're coming from. When we say least favorite, we're not necessarily downing a song. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, there's bound to be a song that doesn't resonate with you as much. And in conclusion, every single member of Striper has more talent in their pinky than I do in my whole being. So there you go, buddy. How's that? <laughs> Well, you wanted another title of the actual video. I've, I've worked it out now. It's going to say, Why Kent Scriber Doesn't Like Striper. That's what it's going <laughs> to. <laughs> no, you, no yeah. mate, you couldn't. You, <laughs> you couldn't have put and, it any. So, you couldn't have put it in. <laughs> so, friends, I just want to say, you know, us being Striper Drive, and, you know, we're a, we're a fan based channel. We're not directly affiliated with Striper. Um, I feel like they've probably given us some latitude, and I'm thankful. For that but this will be my last appearance on any youtube channel now <laughs> after lee gives the title because <laughs> so striper drive will be no more after this episode thank you lee <laughs> you know what though he's we we i we both spend you especially and, and i do we rattle off our videos all the time you know bigging artists up and so we should you know so we should um, I very rarely put artists down at all. And to tell you the truth, if I get sent something from a from an unknown artist, a band sometimes sends, sends me their albums, can you review it? Now, if I don't like it, I won't review it. I won't have a go. I won't, I won't put it down um, because I think that if bands are up and coming, these bands that want to progress and get well known, the last thing they need is, even though my channel's not massive, the last thing they need is anyone saying it's rubbish or they don't like it. So I prefer just to, put it to the side but you know i think we it's very easy to say our good at bandies but it's very hard to say maybe what's not your favorite in front of some of your favorite bands as well this is hard for me because striper right up there with one of my favorite there's one of my favorite bands so you know you see if i chose one of my least favorite bands i could eat this would be easy this episode but it's not it's um <laughs> you know and in future like i said this will be best and worst and it won't seem like we're having, dedicating a show to like the worst songs of someone so this is not a dig like like uh, Kent said there's some albums here that have, that are absolutely fantastic and you know 
it's just one of those things. We, we've got, it's just a debate in it. Our least favourite. Not bad songs, but our least favourite in the way we see it. That's all it is. So I've got that, that all them excuses out of the way. Do you think we're safe? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there will be there will be there will be someone. Most of my videos have got loads of thumbs up. They've got loads of likes, and occasionally got I get occasionally I get a couple of them. This might be a record breaker for them. I don't know, but everybody out there, <laughs> don't take it personally. These are just our least favourites. That's all it is. So there you go. Okay. And, and, and Lee, one last, one last thing to that, buddy. Again, least favorite, as you said, it's just how a song resonates with us. But like we always say on Striker Drive, uh, I hope people can at least appreciate our honesty. Yeah. Because if we were to say every song from this album was a 10 and every song from this album was a 10, no matter the artist, you're lying to the people. Yeah, exactly. And so, friends out there, you know that Lee is always going to be honest, um, and, and and we strive to do the same. Rex and I, my co-host on Striper Drive, ho hopefully you can just appreciate our honesty. There you go. Well said, mate. Right, I, I did muck up the other day. I said there was 14 albums. It's actually 13. I noticed my, my numbers went a bit skew with on the last uh, episode, but there's actually 13 albums we're going to talk about. Not 14. For some reason, I don't know what I did back then. But obviously, we're going to go from oldest to newest album. Um, and again, we're going to talk about the Yellow and Black Attack. You know, you could talk about either album, really, but include all the, is it eight songs that were on the, you know, across yeah. when it was? Uh, eight. Yeah. So Yellow yeah, and Black eight, Attack. Eight then, from the eight, six You're the first okay, one so in line. You're the first one with the target on you. Go. He's going to wait and see what happens to me if I blow up in a puff of smoke or something. So <clears throat> if we can include the 86 remix, uh, I will choose my Love I'll Always Show as my least favorite. Um, the reason why simply uh, out of that eight song album, you, uh, my Love I'll Always Show, it simply put on the brakes. All the other songs on that album, to my listening experience, they, they were fluid. They were rockers. And my love I'll always show, um, it wasn't even a power ballad, Lee. It was strictly a ballad. <laughs> Not that it again. didn't have the drum, <laughs> like honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like honestly, you know, it didn't have the drums. It didn't have that push with the guitars. It was strictly a ballad. So it just simply didn't resonate with me as much as the others because it was a ballad. And it kind of seemed like it put on the brakes on an otherwise fluid album. Well, I've got the same as you, mate. I totally agree with you on that one. And um, the thing is, Striper have done some amazing ballads through their career. Uh, but for me, their ballads are sometimes, earlier on, they were def a lot more missed than they were here. Uh, even though they had some great ones earlier on, this is an example of, for me, yeah, it was just a little bit too, I don't know, it didn't really go anywhere as such, you know. And like we have that little joke about power ballads, don't we? You know, built in, a, in a build up. <laughs> you like there to be a build up in a ballad. I mean, I'm not even when a if even like a, a singer sings something just with acoustic guitar. I'm not. It doesn't resonate with me as much. I want us to hear a bit of rock building up within the song. So my love will always show is exactly the same as you, mate. That's my least favourite as well on Yellow and Black. So good choice. There you go. That weren't too painful, was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny to say good choice when you're talking about your least favorite. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to say it's only a good choice because I chose it. As that, we both chose it. So that's a very good choice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I could see how so, painful this is for you, mate. Honestly, I can. I really can. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. So I guess moving on then to, to 85, the next album, Soldiers Under Command. Mm. Brilliant album. Um, woo. You know, if, if I am ever inclined to skip a song off of Soldiers Under Command, and it doesn't happen often, but if I am going to skip a song, it's going to be Together as One. Mm. Um, uh, a great song in and of itself, but talking about, you know, that, that ballad slash power ballad, 
the song First Love. Brilliant song. Um, to me, Together as One, it just doesn't have quite the same oomph that First Love has. And uh, nothing wrong with it in and of itself. It's just, I, if, I am going, if I'm inclined to skip any song from Soldiers, uh, and I don't do it often, but it's going to be Together as One. That's the same as me, mate. I chose exactly the same one. By the way, we didn't we didn't compare lists, by the way, but we both we've both gone together as one for the same reasons as uh, my love will always show. You know exactly. This. To tell you the truth, if you actually look at my our discussions and even our one the other day, it could have been battle him for me. You would someone might have had a guess at battle him. But one main, the main reason because I like original material most of the time, but. That's a great rendition, man. And when I was a kid, I used to love, I know it's not an Elvis song, by the way, <laughs> but I used to love Elvis singing that as well. I used to love it, man, when I was a kid. And um, he's that In, strong. Yeah. Incidentally, incidentally, Lee, did you know that uh, from my understanding, Striper, uh, I don't mean to misspeak, but somewhere down the Striper history line, I have heard that they their rendition of Battle Hymn was based off of Elvis's rendition. Well, there you go. That's probably why I like it then. So, yeah. you know, I'm not yeah. saying it's, it, it's probably the closest one that I would have chosen. You know, I think when I was a kid, I probably skipped, I probably didn't listen to that one as much. And I had a good listen the other day and I thought, because I was thinking together as one, what about, first of all, I was thinking Battle Hymn. But then when I heard it, I was thinking, you know what? That's a, that is a decent song that, you know, compared to, and together as one made it as well, for <coughs> me, mate. So there you go. And We're the on the funny, same page at the moment. The funny we, thing eh? about that, <laughs> the funny thing about that, Lee, is that was my. Uh, in case we had a runner-up or whatever, Battle Hymn was my second choice. Look at that! Uh, I mean, what's going? What's album. going on? What's going on today, mate? We're like on the same level here, we? Eh? I think. So, I'm not much of a gambling man, but if I were, I would actually be willing to go three for three here with the next album. Yeah, um, the way it's the way let, it's going. Let me I'll roll that. <laughs> Let me roll that dice here. And so from 86 to hell with the devil, I'm going with all of me. And the reason why it's the same as my love I'll always show, it's a putting on the brakes moment. Um, it doesn't have the, uh, the little push to it that honestly has as a ballad, as a power ballad, uh, which all of me is strictly a ballad, no doubt about it. Just another putting on the brakes moment uh, from this otherwise rocking album. So did it? Did did that pay off? <laughs> yes, definitely, mate. Yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. I mean, you've got honestly as well, obviously, as the other ballad. But um, no, nah, it honestly is miles ahead of it, you know. But yeah, all of me didn't really go nowhere. I mean, now they seem to include one ballad an album, don't they? But back then, it was a couple, and um, yeah, they seem to include one of. The real soppy one and then a more stronger one if you like didn't they mm -hmm. so all of me mate so perfect not perfect choices but <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah perfect <laughs> perfect yeah Whatever. I, how do you even go there you know it's, it's like what do you say good choice on this on this song you don't care a lot for whatever you know oh man i'll tell you the sorry mate i'll tell you the funny thing as well um I don't know, Michael seems to comment on a video now and again of mine. Whenever something's said about... Oh, what's going on? I've lost my camera there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he see, he, whenever he hears anything negative, you know, Michael likes to, you know, give his point of view. Hopefully he won't be watching this. We'll be all right. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, thanks. I, see, I didn't need to know that information. You know, now, now the pressure's on. Now there's sweat pouring down off of me, man. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you're on the right. mate. I can I'm see sure. the water start. To get, I can see the water starting to get choppy here, beginning with "In God We Trust." Uh, Eighty-eight, and this was a this was a toss-up. This was a toss-up between these two songs. Um, when it all came out in the wash, though, I had to go with "Come to the Everlife." Um, the reason why uh, I believe in you was kind of a a close second to it. But Come to the Everlife, to me, uh, it's just a little bit simplistic lyrically and musically. Um, hmm. Nothing really bad about it at all. It's just uh, just kind of simplistic. And so, therefore, it's, it's my least 
uh, go-to song on In God We Trust, I guess. I think I might surprise you with my one because um, when we spoke about the production, there's been many, uh, many a conversation from everyone, including Michael Sweet, on the production of this album. And mm -hmm. I've, I've gone for the song that I think is probably the most affected easily on this album by the production. And this is a song that should have, sh if, if they're going to redo a song, this is the one because it'll make the biggest difference. And that's the rain. I just think yeah. for me, it just sounds like a load of drums. That's all it sounds like. The guitars are right back. And I think because of that, because of the speed of the song, it loses all the power that it should have, that song. You know, it's just all drums. It's all I can hear is bang, 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 all the way through it. I can't really hear the guitars. Um, and it just lost all its power for me. And you know with me with fast songs as well, it has to be, if it's fast, it has to be really special, you know. And the rain, maybe redone, would improve it tenfold, I think. But that's my one, mate, the rain. And... You know, Lee, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, on one of our episodes on, on our channel, uh, Rex and I had a guest on. I don't remember if it was our guest, if it was uh, Mike Tift, or if it was Rex. But one of them said the exact same thing about mm -hmm. the rain. Um, you know, they, they like a good hard-hitting song. Maybe it was Mike, because I know Rex is a little more of the mid-tempo striper. But uh, they were talking about the drums, just... Mm -hmm just whacking through that, you know, just, mm. so I, I totally understand what you're saying. I've heard that yeah. from someone else too. Yeah, that's my one anyway, mate. So at least it wasn't the ballad this time. <laughs> right, yeah. I got you, I got you. So, okay. all right, so I guess that puts us to Against the Law in 1990. And, mm. You know, one of my favorite Striper albums, uh, this, this is what I'm talking about, where you can have an album chock full of tens, and maybe one song registers as an eight or a nine. Um, the song that resonates with me the least is Rock the People. Uh, the reason why, to me, it's just a little bit slow and plodding um, in, its, in its rhythm. I know a lot of Striker fans like the song. Mm. Um, so... It's not a bad song at all. It's just, you know, on an other uh, an album that's otherwise just, you know, just mm. really charging, with the exception of Lady. But that's such a brilliant mm. uh, power ballad. But rock the people for me from Against the Law. Okay, I've gone with a different one, mate. And the reason I've gone for this is because, well, we know that Michael's got an issue with this album, and the the issue he's got is that it doesn't sound like Striper, basically. And obviously, lyrically, it was a bit different. Um, and he says it's got it's like a Van Halen album. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't think it's a Van Halen album. I don't either. But the song I've chosen is the most Van Halen out of that album, which is not that kind of guy, which is like totally Van Halen sounding, that one. Sure. And um, I like it. I actually like it as a song. Yeah. But, you know, when you expect Striper you know, what you want to hear for Striper doing is not that, you know. I think there was slight touches of Van Halen in Against the Law song, the actual title track, but not to the extent of not that kind of guy. So that's my uh, one that least resonates with me, if you like. Not that kind of guy on that one, mate. Great album, though. Great album. I can't help it. And I totally get it, man. Not that kind of guy. I mean, it, it pays a lot of homage to Hot for Teacher. Um, I, I can't help but love the song, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, well, man, this is what it's all about. This, this is the whole <laughs> reason for doing this episodes like this, because it's all opinion, isn't it? You love a song, I don't love a song. It's just as simple as that. We yeah. all like different stuff, don't we? I, I just, I mean, Oz is just kicking butt on guitar, oh, yeah. and 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 Michael. Man, his vocal delivery on this whole album was just stellar. Mm -hmm. Like you and I talked about on our on our favorites episode that we just did, that's when he got that a little bit of gruffness to his voice, as well as retaining his stratospheric range. And you know, I think about the lyrics, you know, to, to this <laughs> song. 
I just love, I mean, everything about it was right. I mean, on the whole album. And I digress. I know we have to finish out this episode. <laughs> That's all right, man. One well, we last. Go on. Yep. One last thing I've got to say, though, Lee. And Michael, I, I am totally respectful of Michael Sweet. I love everything, you know, that he's brought to the table for Striper and the other guys, too. They all bring something to the table. But where I have to respectfully disagree with Michael, because like you, I know that he has some reservations or whatever about against the law in the music, but I've just got to respectfully, de uh, not debate, he'll, he'll kick my butt, but <laughs> let's look at this next album we're about to get into, Reborn. You talk about an album that is far removed from Striker's sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much further removed than against the law and I would dare to respectfully argue the subsequent album after that, Murder by Pride, half of that album, uh, removed from Striker's sound. I think the last couple of albums, mate, I think, sorry, mate, I think those last couple of albums that Striper have done, the newest ones, mm -hmm. they are a lot more towards against the law than, than those older Striper albums, you know, like The Hell with the Devil, um, Soldiers Under Command. I think there's a real balance where you're hearing those vibes you got with Against the Law, for sure. Mm -hmm. You're hearing that in some of the songs now. Mm -hmm. The better ones, in my opinion, because, you know, the better songs on Against the Law, and it's a great album, but the better songs on Against the Law, you definitely hear some of those vibes in the new albums, so especially the last two. Especially the last two. I knew, I knew there was a good reason why I like you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like me anymore after bringing you on here though <laughs> no man I, I couldn't have said it any better I mean against the law is very uh, with its general soundscape it is it is very much uh, in alignment with the past few striker albums uh, yeah. so anyway I, I digress sorry I went there let's right, get to reborn in, so in 2005 reborn I I'm thankful for the album because it officially said, hey, you know, we're, we're back, guys. And, and I'll, I'll always give Reborn credit for being that album that gave us a, a full album of, of new Striker material. So my the, the one that I connected with the least on this album is probably Rain. Um, in and of itself, it's actually a very nicely crafted song. It begins with the ooh la la's in there. And to me, Lee, it's just not really a striper song. It would lend itself to Michael Sweet's solo material, especially some of his earlier stuff uh, before his last couple of solo albums. So that's the one that I connect with the least is Ray. I found this album the hardest one. And I'll tell you why, because I think it's probably obviously one of the weakest ones out of a great catalogue, by the way. I'm not putting it down at all. But whereas you, like we've said before, where you've got them albums where you've got some tens and they're standout tracks and then what you have, you have something that's quite a bit below those standout tracks. So you have an album chock full of great tracks and you're easy better pick the one you don't like or as much. You go, well, that's right. no way as good as them. But this album was very much, you know, if you was going to give it a mark, Across the board, you would say it's like a 7 out of 10, for instance, but all the tracks were very 7 out of 10. You know, they was all very mm -hmm. similar, you know, nearly as good as each other. Yeah. Not anything outstanding, but not anything bad. Do you know what I mean? That's why it's difficult for right. me. Um, but I really had to think about this one. The song I've chosen, and I can't even think of a reason why. It was just because that's the one I thought just didn't resonate with me. It wasn't like I thought there was anything wrong with it, but it's 10,000 years is the one I've chosen. And it's that just- That was my runner up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I really like the album. I'm not saying it's anywhere near the strongest sort of album, but I think that's what made it hard for me because they, it, was, it was like a seven out of 10 album, but every track was seven. Whereas, you know, if we're talking about scoring, say to hell with the devil, you've got a load of nines and tens there. Yeah. And all of me maybe would, would be a would be a seven or a six and a half away. You know, it's just yeah. Um, on, on reborn, that line of demarcation mm. was was very much marginalized. Definitely. There wasn't much of a wide gap, and you know, yeah. ten thousand years, as I mentioned, that was the, my second choice. A song that I at least resonated with me. Mm. 
and you were saying about putting your finger on it, to me, it was because 10,000 years had a bit of like a techno feel. I mean, mm. you know, instead of being able to headbang to a song, uh, it's almost like you could dance to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but, um, yeah, difficult one, that one, mate. That was the most, that was the one I had the trouble with the most, put it that way, so. Okay. Uh, so in 2009, Murder by Pride came out, <clears throat> kind of a one foot in, some of that classic striper sound and, and, and one foot kind of still in the reborn terrain. Um, the song that I chose and that least resonates with me is, um, is I Believe. And I simply chose that one, you know, at the onset, uh, the delivery, um, it's just a bit saccharine at the intro and on the chorus and it does open up and it gets, gets powerful during the chorus. But uh, the guitar tone and the riffage within that chorus, uh, not that it's a bad thing, it just always kind of reminded me of Creed, kind of like in the style of what Creed would be doing on their material. Yeah. Um, well, it was big around that time, wasn't they, I think? Creed, they, that was around about that time, wasn't it? Yeah, I think Creed was like... Uh, a few years before, probably. Yeah, 99, 2000. And then mm. they had, I think, three or four albums that they put out. So, yeah. you know... Yeah. Well, I, it. it's good. Well, it's a good choice, mate. I'm not, this one for me, this, this, I don't know if this is going to be a bit weird, this one, because it should have been good, but I'll tell you why I didn't like it. And it's Eclipse of the Sun, the first track. And for me, I can't stand punk music, that punk. Like, you know, a lot, there was a lot of that music around back like in the early 2000s, around about when new metal was hitting in as well, there was a lot of punk music. And it doesn't fully turn into a punk song, but that's the first thing I thought of when I first heard this album. That's a, that's a punky riff right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hear Striper playing punk. <laughs> I just don't. I don't. It really sounded... I could understand at the time some little bits of influence coming in from elsewhere. It happens to every band, you know. But... Um, there's definitely a punk influence there, and I one thing I can't get along with is punk music. I don't I don't mind original punk music, you know, the Sex Pistols and you know proper punk. But when the you know the, there was channels, music channels, full up with this stuff, wasn't there? A bit later on, you know that Green Day, yeah, all that all that rubbish. I, I can't stand it, I, honestly. <laughs> but there you uh, go. <laughs> you know, I something that pleases me now. I am a fan of a smidge of punk, and it's more like the original stuff. My favorite punk band is the Ramones, and mm. um, you know, but I'm not a Green Day fan or anybody like that. Um, I'm very glad though that you qualified Eclipse for the Sun as being punk or post-punk, mm. uh, because well, we have an episode coming out here in a, another week or two, and I make a mention uh, about. Eclipse for the Sun, and I qualified it as being a punk song. So your evaluation of it is refreshing to me because I'm like, okay, my my thinking of this style is, you know, hopefully right on course there. So, uh, I mean, if you look at what, right, uh, if you look at if you look at Striper now, I know we're not talking about it right now, but it did, it doesn't matter what now they've they've understood, haven't they? And, and I know they're doing things they want to do as well, but it's like they've gone. We know what everyone wants us to play. We want to play what, you know, and they pleased everyone, haven't they? Whereas back then, I think they got dragged a little bit into the what was going on at the time. You know what I mean? You can't blame them, but it happens, you know? Well, uh, and you know, Lee, we have to consider too, uh, what was it? Four, four, no, 12 years, because in, in, in 03, they came out with the two new songs off of seven... Uh, the best of Striper, and prior to that was 1991 with Believe and Can't Stop the Rock off of that collection. So for 12 mm. years they were away from the scene. Um, yeah, exactly. Not yeah. Michael per se with his solo stuff, but I think Striper. I, I can't speak for them, of course. I don't mm. know this information. I I can only surmise. Here was a band that's been away for 12 years. And they're coming back to a, a music scene as a collective band, and they are 
trying to make that impression again. It's almost like making a first impression for a second time and being relevant. And we have to think about what the music scope and scape was at that time. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Bon Jovi, uh, even, you know, uh, Have a Nice Day. And what was that song? You know, this ain't a song for the brokenhearted or however it went. Yeah. All of these classic bands, the, the soundscape was changing because the, the musical landscape has changed. And I think yeah. Striper was just trying to trying to hit the scene again and make an impact and to say, hey, you know, we're, we're relevant. I'm just glad uh, that period of time, 05, well, 03, I guess, through 09, I'm just glad that was kind of a, we can look back now and say that was a window of time. That was a, a snapshot, a time capsule of Striper. Because, you know, with subsequent albums, and I give credit to the covering um, and onward, I mean, you know, Striker is back to doing what they do best, and they, they are certainly delivering the goods. Without a doubt, Mike. Without so a doubt. if you're watching this, Michael Sweet, I hope you heard that comment right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate it. It's very constructive, mate. It's very constructive indeed. That's how it should be anyway, isn't it? So there you go. <laughs> the covering, mate. So... Yeah, the covering. Now, Lee, this was the toughest one for me. Hmm. Um, my choice, and it's only because of a technicality, my choice was the trooper. And the reason why I chose the trooper, <clears throat> this technicality that I'm speaking of, there was absolutely nothing wrong or bad with the delivery of Striper covering that song. It simply has to do with the timbre of Michael's voice compared to Bruce Dickinson's. Michael did it well. Striper performed it well. They always pay wonderful homage by doing something quality when they're covering somebody's uh, material. It simply has to do with the input of my ears because Michael's voice is one timbre and Bruce's is another. Hmm. Um, so when it when it when that particular song just crosses my ears, Striper is doing everything right. It's just kind of an oddity, mm. if you will, just to yeah. hear Michael's timbre in comparison with Bruce's. That's that's the best way I know how to say it. And let me flip flop that. What if you had Bruce Dickinson singing? Uh, you know, inside of me there is a lonely place. I mean. You know, <laughs> I, I know that doesn't sound like Bruce, but, you know, that's the best Bruce that I can do. What if you had Bruce Dickinson, you know, calling on you? I mean, it, it just doesn't sound right. Yeah. And so that's the point. You can flip-flop that, and it wouldn't, you know, it's just kind of an oddity. Um, yeah. How about Bruce Dickinson that's sing covers? That's the only covers? way I know how to put it. I've heard Bruce Dickinson and Iron Maiden do covers, mate, and they haven't sound right at all, and I love his voice, you know, so you, you're totally right. You, you have to be very careful what songs you choose. You really do. But, um, no, that's a great choice, mate. Uh, my one, this was, quite, this was quite hard for me as well, to tell you the truth. Um, but I think they improved this song, but I just don't like the song. And <laughs> it's Highway Star. I just can't... I'm not, I'm, I'm not into Deep Purple. I'm not into that old, real old classic rock. I'm a, definitely an 80s kid, you know. Um, and a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that come out of the 70s, I never got into Deep Purple. Never did get into them. And Highway Star is no exception. Although, I think they brought a lot more energy to it. They improved it a lot. But I just liked mm -hmm. other songs a lot better, you know. Just don't like, just don't yeah. like Deep Purple, man. And I know it's sacrilege to a lot of people, but... Um, <laughs> I just don't. I can't get on with them. And Highway Star, I've never liked it. But they did a good rendition, put it that way. They improved it, which is a good thing. So there you go. <coughs> okay. All righty. So I guess in 2013, of course, two, two great albums we were blessed with that year from Striker. But Second Coming dropped first. And, you know, if we had to choose between the two new songs, which were Blackened and Bleeding from Inside Out, uh, Blackened resonates with me the least between the two songs, the two new ones. Blackened is certainly a good song. I just like that swinging riff. Da -da, da -da 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 -da, you know, that uh, bleeding head. And so 
that really just latched on to me. And so by, by proxy, blacking just didn't latch on like bleeding did. If we had to go with the, uh, with the re-records, uh, absolutely stellar song, but ironically, and I, I love it in its original rendition, but Reach Out, hmm. it has this odd lower register prominent voice in the chorus uh, on the re-record. And uh, again, just like I was talking about the trooper, uh, nothing wrong, just, just an oddity when it hits my ears. That prominent lower register that appears in the chorus of Reach Out the Re-Record, it just has this odd uh, register to me. That's all I know how to say. So, <laughs> no, this see, it's, it's a good choice, by the way, but and the reasons why the, I found this quite hard. Um, and the reason I've chosen this, I think, is because I love the song so much that I thought it didn't need to be done, and it put me off of the re-record. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually chosen one of my favourite songs from Striper only because I didn't think it needed touching, and that was to hell with the devil. So nothing, nothing wrong with the what they did with it, but you know you think some of them songs on there really improve some of the older ones, definitely. <clears throat> but when it comes to to hell with the devil, if you give me the choice of which version to put on, every time I'm going to go with the original, and it's nothing to do with production because I understand how good the production is now. It's just there's something about that original song that I absolutely love. And I, I think it's a perfect song. You know, and it's one of them songs you think, well, yeah. you know, just mm -hmm. don't, it's so perfect. Just leave it alone, that one. But that's just my opinion, you know, but um, difficult to say to hell, with the, <clears throat> difficult to say with, to hell with the devil is your least favourite one on the album. I know that's a bit of a weird saying, but it's just, <laughs> because I, it's just because I think that's the one that really might have been better off staying as it was, in my opinion. So there you go. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to go with First Love, Lee. I love that as well, man. I remember, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I remember how much you loved the original of that when you made, you commented one time. And so I thought you were heading that direction, you know. But, uh, well, say anyway, true. Very I, similar. I've got, totally. got a very similar way. I do feel a lot, just what you said, First Love is probably very close because I think that's so good, the original as well. But there you go, mate. That's an interesting one. That really is. <laughs> all righty so pushing ahead to no more hell to pay of the same year you know uh man stellar album no more hell to pay i had to go though uh well, classic example of of a nine compared with a lot of other tens uh water into wine uh it's a bit plotting i really appreciate uh, here's the biggest reason why it didn't resonate with me as much I greatly appreciated the message in this song, but lyrically, it seemed a bit quirky in, in a couple spots. And here's, here's a couple examples. I, I appreciate what it's saying, but one of the lyrics reads, he cast devils into swine. And the word swine just, I don't know why, and it's, it, it, it could very well be me as the listener. When I heard swine, I mean, it just, you know, in a metal song, it just seemed kind of like an oddity. And then the uh, another example, uh, will we stop trying to hide or be like Pharaoh? And Pharaoh in this, in this rocking song, you know, it just struck me as an oddity. And I could make the exact same case in point with Four Leaf Clover mm -hmm. from Murder by Pride, a standout song in my humble opinion for Murder by Pride. But when we get to the lyric, uh, there's no strength in a unicorn. Me just hearing the word unicorn in a metal song, I mean, I, it just struck me as, as an oddity. And, you know, I don't mind saying that's just that I'll put it all on me. I mean, you know, it, it might just be me as the listener. But nonetheless, that's my reasoning for Water Into Wine. I know that Mark uh, Clower said the similar thing with um, Sorry song sorry um charming mm -hmm. having the word charming in there he he, he just yeah. he just felt like it had um i don't know it made him feel a certain way it's you know i don't know it's just it's just what yeah. it's just your, your everyone's opinion at the end of the day so okay mate this you know what i think about no more hell to pay i think it's one of the best albums i've ever done um and on these four albums 
they're they really do mix it up between power metal and a rock and roll type a bit like our against the law conversation they've got little bits of that in there and they they go their full power metal as well so the reason i've chosen um this song is because it's that rock and roll heaviness which i'm not it's not you know it's not bad but i prefer their power metal and i've gone probably a surprise saved by love i've gone for saved Ooh. by love um i just prefer it when they do their rocking fast stuff you know i'm thinking more you know blood from above that that type stuff i love that mm -hmm. power metal heavy stuff not to not as keen on the rock and roll type fast song so saved by love is my, my one on there mate man he uh michael really belts it out on that chorus though doesn't oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> definitely yeah. yeah yeah no that's that's uh you know and what what you were saying about mark clover making that comment about sorry and charming that that makes me feel a little bit better because at least i'm not the only one there's two of us in the world me and mark <laughs> so, <laughs> kudos to you mark <laughs> oh all right, so uh, Fallen from 2015, Lee, I've got to go with Big Screen Lies. Um, again, I appreciated the message. I think the thing with me is I just had a bit of a disconnect with the, uh, the chorus's lyrical simplicity. Big Screen Lies, it's no surprise. I'm getting wise to the Big Screen Lies. Um, Love the message, and I totally get what Mike was saying in the in, in the bigger picture of the song. Um, but I think it's just a little bit of a disconnect with the chorus of simplicity, and uh, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I've gone with the same song as well, mate. I've got bigger screen lies as well, and it is the chorus for me as well, but not lyrically. I just it was the sat the actual chorus itself musically. Um, it just wasn't as good as the other choruses on the album. wasn't as strong. And like it sounded a bit, I don't know. It sounded they sounded a bit a bit too mature on other songs. They're more mature than that. It, they sounded it sounded a bit, you know, less mature for them that chorus for me. But um, it's, I still actually like it. It's just not right up there with the rest for me. But good choice there from right. the same choice from both of us there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, guilt coming over. So much guilt coming over. Oh, us right now. <laughs> oh, so here we go with uh, man, such a great album, 2018 GDE. And uh, again, another classic example of a you know a, a, an eight song out of a slew of tens. But Sea of Thieves, um, it's a very good song. I don't have anything to say bad about it. It's just not quite as strong as many of the others on that album. And that's all there is to that one with me. I've got the same song, mate. Sea of Thieves. There you go. See? And it, it's exactly the same as it's, it's rock and roll territory again. And it, it even have a 70s type feel to this. They don't often go in that 70s feel. I know they've, they've gone even further back in there with slightly psychedelic sounds. But this had a real 70s classic rock sound. And I don't know. Sea of Thieves, yeah, for me, exactly the same. I mean, Take it to the cross, I think just pick the post because of those really that heavy riffing in those verses is just fantastic, you know. Mm -hmm. But but I think and that that song to me sounds a bit lopsided in the way of two different songs in one, it sounds to me, take it to the cross. It just all of a sudden comes to a complete standstill before it get goes <laughs> to that core. And then it goes back again to that epic almost Yahweh verses and then that strange chorus which the chorus is okay on its own but the mm -hmm. song was really unbalanced as far as I you know I <laughs> felt but Sea of Thieves is definitely the one for me as well mate yeah I think I think on Take It To The Cross Lee uh, I like the song I think maybe the issue it's it seems a bit disjointed because yeah. it goes from one style and then Robert hits a snare and then all of a sudden we're into thrash territory with the double time. If they could have put a bridge in between, you know, the verse and then at, at the chorus, if they could have kind of built some kind of a, a musical bridge leading into mm -hmm. the, the double time thrash, I think mm -hmm. that really would have helped out. Yeah. 
Um, like a pre-chorus, because, like, a, like a pre-chorus or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 But man, totally I like them, I like a little bit of trash, and yeah. and I like Same. you know Striper's other stuff. Um, I, I know what you're saying about Take It to the Cross. So yeah. Speaking about some uh, some heavy hitters that Striper has, that takes us into 2020. Even the Devil Believes, and I love this song. Uh, it's got a touch of Motorhead to it for me. Um, it's just one of those nine out of tens because on even the Devil Believes, to me that truly is an album chock full of tens. Um, this one I'd give it a nine only because it doesn't quite possess uh, the the hook that so many of the others have. But I dig this song. It's just a nine in a field of tens in its middle finger Messiah. Um, you know, great, great uh, slamming song with the touch of Motorhead injected into it. And um, as far as the, you know, the pace of the song, um, I don't know what else to say about it. I love it. It's just probably a nine in that field of tens. I've got the same again, mate. So the last three albums, we're the same. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, from the beginning, this has been not a weak track, but the weakest track for me, the least favorite. It has been ever since I heard the album and it hasn't changed. Although, like you said, it's still a good track, you know, and the, the bookend, they bookended the album with heavy tracks. And like, you know, I think that mentioning Bud from above again, it just completely knocks this out of the park. It knocks Middle Finger Messiah out of the park because, because of its complexity, you know, it's big, mm-hmm. massive, epic sound, you know, and, like you said, middle finger of a sorry. It's, it's more like a, like almost a jammy, like a jammy song, like the band are jamming out, you know, more. Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the others, are, whereas the other tracks on the album are very thought out, very melodic, you know, but it's still a good song, but yeah, it, it's definitely the weakest song for me as well. So, mm-hmm. mate, we had a lot of similarities, didn't we? You know, in six. Those, six. We, That's nearly half. We had out of 13 uh, albums, six, six of our choices were the same. And I had one runner up from Soldiers Under Command, which was Battle Him. Uh, well, no. Okay, so look. Battle Him was my runner up, and I think that was yours too. And we yeah. had the same for that one. So we could go ahead and say out of 13 albums, we had seven of the same choices. So really what that means is that we're not going to get as much abuse as we think. <laughs> or if we do, <clears throat> or if we do, Lee, we'll just have to take it together as a team. Yes, exactly, you know? <laughs> mate. Exactly, yeah. So I, this is really interesting, actually. I mean, to hear what everyone's going to say, because it is difficult to say what's your least favourite. Because it, like you said, it's easy to say, oh, I love that song, I love that song. It's not easy to say that one is not as good. So I'm really interested to hear what people say, comments for this one. As long as they don't abuse us too much, I'm, yeah. I'm really interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if everybody's honest with themselves, no matter who your favorite band is or whatever, there will always be an album as a whole, yeah. or, or maybe a few albums out of a bigger catalog, or you know, a song or two or three that you can always say, if you're honest, hey, I love this band. They might be my favorite band in the world, but I just don't connect quite as much with this album or this song. And yeah. that's all that we're saying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it, cause it, it, this is harder because it's one of our favorite bands. I mean, they're, they're probably your, mm-hmm. I don't know if they're your favorite band. I would have thought they are your top band. And for me, they are my favorite. Well, they are go. my favorite band of, mm-hmm. of the, of the genre that they're in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. And for me, they're, for a band in nowadays in the, you know, in 2021 to be climbing up my favorite bands are probably the, the music they're putting out now, put it that way. They're in my top five easy. I would have thought right now. And that, you know, I like so many bands. That's a, a massive thing, you know? So, and, and they're, they're climbing every time they're, they're earning more and more in my respect. And I think they're getting stronger and stronger, you know, it, funny, isn't it? I, I could easily pick out those last few albums. I could easily pick out my my least favorite because, like you said, so many strong songs. And when they dip a little bit, just that little bit, you're like, oh yeah, that's the one. Whereas on their weaker albums, if you like, in that middle dodgy middle period, it was so hard because it was like they're all 
you know, good to, they're all sort of average to good songs, you know, whereas now you get a load of really brilliant songs. It's easy to pick out the one you don't like so much. So very interesting, really interesting exercise that. So, um, so yeah, thanks for joining me again, mate. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, buddy. It has. Thank you so much for having me back on. What was you going to say? You going to say something? I say it's been a pleasure. We'll we'll <laughs> find out if it's been a pleasure or not. How much take I heat or how much heat I take. See, I, I'm so flustered I can't even talk straight. <laughs> Whenever this episode airs, Lee, I'll know if it's a pleasure or not, depending upon how much heat I take after after this. Look, mate, it's all about the way you say stuff. Like I said, it's constructive. You know, I, you know, what Facebook is like, for instance, people go on there and say, I hate that band. They're useless. Uh, you know, that song is crap. And they say it in such a negative way. You know, the, if we take any stick for this, I'll be a bit shocked because it's just, you know, it, it's our least favorites. And that, that's, a, that's a conversation again to have. There's nothing wrong with having a conversation about that. So look at me, I feel guilty as well. So I don't know why, but there you go, I do. Well, I... I was just about to say, uh, looking especially at these last four albums, what's interesting to me is the our least favorites in looking at them. They are still strong songs. Yeah, yeah. You know, they might not be tens, mm. but they are still strong songs, and that says something. That says something about the quality that a band is putting. In. Definitely. Definitely. Well, Michael put out his favourite songs the other day, Striper songs, didn't he? Perhaps he might put out his least favourite songs now. You never know. <laughs> it'd, be yeah, against, never know. It'd, be, it'd be all of Against the Law, wouldn't it? It'd be like all those tracks. <laughs> man, I love that album. I mean, I always have. Yeah, I know. Mm. I know. It's a good album, man. Well, look, man, thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate you putting you under this pressure as well. You know, I, I really do appreciate it. So we can always do another about another band to make you feel better about yourself. We could do a best and worst of someone else, you know, just to... <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, buddy, thank you for having me back on. It's always great. And I'm always I'm always on. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, thanks, man. No problem. And of course, I'll put the um, link to the channel again at the bottom of this video so everyone can check your channel out, which is great, which is absolutely fantastic. All right, then, mate. Thank you very much. And um, please put your comments below. Thank you very much.